It should also be put in the context, though, of the entire Iran deal. So we now know at this point that the United States gave $1.7 billion of foreign cash to Iran. We gave $150 billion of sanctions relief. We allowed them access to ballistic missile technology. We allowed them access to international arms. And we released seven criminals. Uh, that the United States was holding for violating sanctions relief, all to get an extraordinarily complicated framework that's going to be hard to enforce, and at the end of which, Iran will be a nuclear state. This was a horrible deal. This uh, ransom is one component of this horrible deal, and there was one done by a, a, a naive foreign policy and one that was so intent on getting a deal, getting the foreign policy achievement, uh, that it wasn't ever willing to take a step back and look at what are we giving, what are we getting, does it make sense for the American people? And I, from that, I want to lead into Syria, because we saw the image this week of this little boy um, who lost his brother after his family was hit uh, with this airstrike. He comes from the rubble. He's stunned. You see him touch his forehead and realize, looking at his, his little hand, that there's blood there. I mean, this conflict has been raging for years, but it took this little boy to restart the conversation and get the attention. Now, if, uh, you know, we look at the money that just went to Iran, their admission that they've been propping up the Assad regime, um, and now they have an extra $1.7 billion uh, that they could use to that end. Um, five years ago, this is what the president said about Syria. We have consistently said that President Assad must lead a democratic transition or get out of the way. He has not led. For the sake of the Syrian people, the time has come for President Assad to step aside. Juan, five years later, we have that little boy. We have millions displaced, hundreds of thousands dead. Well, it's a tragedy. I mean, there's no way, you know, I have a grandson and you look at that little guy and you just, your heart just goes out to him. And, you know, Shannon, there was a picture also of a dead child washing up on mm -hmm. the shore earlier. Mm -hmm. So you understand the, the number of people, I think it's not more than 400,000 who've lost their lives in this conflict. And again, you come back to what can we do? So the argument would be, well, do we want to <clears throat> enforce that red line? And what would that mean? It's not, it doesn't just mean airstrikes. It would mean potentially putting American forces at risk. And I don't think the American people want to do that. But what can we do? Well, one thing, one thing is you don't draw a red line that you then ignore. Uh, you know, when the president made that uh, statement five years ago, uh, the, Assad was in a very, very tough position. Uh, it looked like he might, it, his government really might fall. Uh, there probably could have been some things that we could have done uh, that would have helped that happen. But the problem, and the, this is the problem we've seen with this administration all along, is that they uh, they, they just squander our leadership. And now, and of course, obviously, uh, Vladimir Putin has, has gone in there. Russia is now uh, flying sorties out of mm -hmm. Iran, uh, firing Tomahawk missiles out of the Mediterranean and the Black Sea. Uh, you know, th th these are big developments where uh, the Obama administration has moved, uh, completely removed uh, the United States from being a legitimate voice. But what we do know is what's going on in Syria is a direct result of the foreign policy of President Obama, Hillary Clinton, John Kerry, which has said America is going to give up our position of leadership in the Middle East. We are going to give leadership to Russia, to Iran. You look at what could have been done. We shouldn't have left a void in Iraq. We should have enforced our red line. We should have gotten involved earlier in supporting Syrian opposition sources. We could have not only started the bombings uh, when we did, but had more threatening bombings to the Assad regime that could have put more doubt in his mind about whether he has a long-term future. This is an administration that does not perceive America as having a leadership position in the world. It's been the result of it is what's going on in Syria. And history is going to look back very, very ill favorably upon what's but going I on. 